I can tell, I can give you that the three most common bottlenecks that I have seen. Uh, number one, it's the easiest one. Uh, the most frequent one is when you are lost into details. So, you know, when you start your journey as an entrepreneur, you do everything by yourself, right? And step by step, you're building something. Yeah. Did you know, by the way, that uh, entrepreneur is a French word? It comes from the verb entreprendre. And entreprendre means to do something. Ah. That's what entrepreneurs are. They are doers. They build something usually from scratch, right? Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, they don't really know, you know, which, they don't have, they don't have, they don't have any guidelines so they don't really know which which pieces is going where by when and so there's a lot of uh, trial and error yep and sometimes you have to start from scratch again and yep. the other thing is that you never really know when the construction is going yep. and so it's easy to get lost into details because you want to do everything you want to control everything yeah and as the company grows you know if you keep controlling everything you're going to become the bottleneck because everything has to go through you. And if everything goes through you, how can the company go? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. So this is where you have to start delegating, delegating. This is where you have to hire people and uh, give them some uh, authority. Mm. Uh, this is where also what is really, really important to do at the very early stage is to force yourself to take a step back from the daily operations, right? and think big picture you know take that helicopter view and look at you know the where you're going why are you going there where are you going are we still on track how do i know when i reach my destination all those stuff because as an as the as a the, the funder you are in charge of that strategy yeah so that's that's the number one ties to this uh first bottleneck is the second one which is the inability to let go. Yep. When you want to control everything, yep. it's very easy to say, no, 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 I'm the only one who can do it correctly. Nobody yep. else can. So I'm going to keep that. I have heard stories of uh, funders hiring leaders because they realize they cannot you know, do everything, but then not empowering them with decision making. Mm. So they had leaders who were not making any decisions. How is that helping them? Because they they were they would end up making all the decisions. Yeah. And so that takes the ability to let go, yep. to realize that other people can do a, a good job. Actually, they can do a better job than you. But also to realize that they're gonna make mistakes, and that is absolutely fine because you're gonna be there to, to clean. Yeah. But that will give you the power of you know doing something else yep. focusing on what matters the most and as the company grows your role should evolve mm. as the company grows you should be less and less involved in the daily operations and more and more involved into the strategic thing yeah but you can't do that if you do not let go i can give you an example of uh, one of my first clients he was uh he was an architect and he was we was we, we started talking and he was telling me that he's still involved a lot in uh, managing clients and managing projects but he, he he understood that that was not sustainable moving forward but he didn't want to let go and, mm -hmm. and because he was telling me at the beginning because i love it you know so i was like okay let's start digging and we started digging a little bit and we realized that the reason why he was not letting go, it's not because he loved it. That was a fake excuse. It's because he was not, didn't want to lose control of the quality. Yeah. He was afraid that if he hired someone to do his job, the quality standards that he had spent so many years yeah. building would go there. Yep. would decrease and that would in turn affect his, his customers that is why i didn't want to let go yeah so what we did is that we worked together on you know seeing the the, the pictures differently mm -hmm. so instead of looking at it as a as a challenge let's look at it as an opportunity to actually increase the quality standards 
And from there, you know, what sort of stuff do you want to hire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Mm. Mm. So that's that's bottleneck number two. Yeah. Bottleneck number three, which is coming back to the one, it's a lack of uh, clarity of direction. Usually when you start your business, you know why you start your business. But then as the business grows, you kind of lose that clarity. And you're going to reach a point where you're not sure where to go. Should I go straight? Should I go left? Should I go right? What sort of decisions should I, should I be making? This is the time when you need to go back to that why. Yeah. Go back to that story I was telling you about at the beginning. You know, Why did you create the company? Remember that story. Because that is the DNA of your company. That is that will never change. It's like the, it's like the human DNA. Yeah. I how aligned are you with that DNA today? Yeah. And often you realize that you have you have lost track. You are, you are misaligned. And if you go back to this alignment, it gives you it gives you you know so what you call in French a raison d'être. It's a reason to be, reason yeah. to exist. Yeah. And this is very powerful also for your staff. Because once you explain to your staff why we exist and why we do the things that we do, you know, it's kind of a beacon for them or a flag where they can gather and, yeah. uh, you know, all, yeah. to, all together. Yeah. And it makes more sense for them. It gives them another reason to wake up every morning and come and come and work for you. And yeah. also it will help, it will, if they understand it, it will also help them execute it 